Raif Badawi's liberal website covered religion, politics, free speech. It mocked Saudi clerics and praised secularism. In Canada, where they've been given asylum, his wife and children are calling on governments across the world to demand his release. His crime was starting a blog called Free Saudi Liberals, a heinous crime, according to the government of Saudi Arabia, one worthy of being sentenced to 1,000 public lashes, another case of guilt by insulting Islam. Our next guest is willing to stand in for the convicted and also understands the Saudi mindset that may or may not be in flux following the death of their king. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, former lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy, president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, and author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith, Dr. Zudi Jasser joins us today. Dr. Jasser, good to see you again. It's great to be with you again. Thanks for having me back. Why are you going to the Saudis and telling them that you will take the lashes and have you received well, any response you know, and do you think it will happen? Well, we're ready for it. Uh, it's not only myself, but uh, many of my colleagues uh, uh, who are religious freedom advocates, Professor George from Princeton, uh, Marianne Gelden from Harvard University, uh, uh, Daniel Mark from Villanova. A number of us said, you know, the world needs to pay more attention to exactly what happens to true heroes, true reformists who are behind the cells in uh, uh, the prisons of Saudi Arabia. And there's really no difference between what the Saudis do to reformers. They call him a blasphemer and apostate. Why? Because he wanted to question the royalty and the uh, uh, Wahhabi judges. There's no difference between that judicial system and what the radicals, the terrorists did against the Charlie Hebdo uh, uh, cartoonists. It's the exact same method. And I, as a Muslim, as an American, say, you know, uh, uh, the president, for example, on the death of King uh, Abdullah said, he recognized the morals of the courage of his convictions. I mean, is is he for real? The, if we're going to say that the king of Saudi Arabia has the courage of his convictions, then okay, why doesn't he whip me, an American who's free and is willing to stand uh, for, uh, instead of whipping Rafe, who is going to die at the end of a stick, rather than the king who died mercifully, uh, I'm sure, comfortably in bed. Let me ask, and I'm going to get to the king here in just a moment, but with regard to your and others who are saying that you will go take the lashes for him, uh, many critics have said this is really just for show. It will never happen. Do you expect the Saudis to answer back positively and invite you over to take the lashes? Well, you know, I'm sure it would be an international incident if they actually did it, but we're ready to do it. I mean, we're not, it, it wasn't easy to sign that letter. We, we, as we signed it, we realized the courage of Rafe Bedoui. And I wouldn't sign, I've never signed anything or said anything to my name that I don't believe. We're ready to present ourselves to the Saudi embassy. We sent it to the uh, uh, Saudi ambassador in Washington, and uh, we haven't heard back from him. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, I think it'll, it'll be obvious that if they are willing to uh, whip Rafe Bedoui, they should be w willing to whip anybody who wants to take his place because we don't believe he's a criminal. Not only we, do we not believe he should be whipped, he should be released immediately. And we hope this also wakes up President Obama to utter his name, Rafe Bedoui, from his lips, just as Reagan used to utter the name of Natan Sharansky and others who wanted to be free under the Soviets. Let's talk about another case of insulting Islam here. King Abdullah, at 90 years of age, passes away, and there are many people who look at Saudi Arabia and they see them as friendly to the United States. I think the word ally is maybe sometimes too casually tossed aside because it's not as if they are with us on every single thing. There's many things that we disagree with regarding the Saudis and that relationship here. But as we look at the king dying, his brother, I believe, younger by one year, has taken over now. Is there any reason whatsoever to believe that the Saudi government, while they seem to be peaceful, will in any way, shape, or form change what they do? And basically, when it comes down to these laws, stop what is really, in many ways, a terrible way to punish people and which is subjugating people and which is, once again, pushing forth that note, that, that thinking, if you will, that Muslim is a religion that simply looks to punish people and kill them the moment you talk bad about God. Well, you know, this is why I do what I do and why I take the time to do this, because, you know, meet uh, the new king, Salman, same as the old king, uh, Abdullah. Uh, you know, Abdullah had 30 sons and uh, over 12 wives, and it's a corrupt culture. They, they believe that somehow God identified them as the custodians of our holy mosques, uh, uh, which is a corrupt classism. And uh, they are hypocrites. Now, ultimately, what we have to look at in America is when we look at our foreign policy, yes, they may be our allies against common enemies, 
but we certainly don't share common allies with them. Whether I mean, King Abdullah oversaw when he took over in the 90s the radicalization of a population that created the ideologies that created al qaeda led to 9/11 led to fort hood led to the paris attacks and led if you look at the ideology of isis saudi arabia has beheaded well, people who want to be free uh, in the last few months over 20 of them no different than what isis does so we have to start holding our so-called allies just because they're uh, against Iran and against Al Qaeda, it doesn't make them any different. And I'm not saying that we need to abandon them, but we need to call a spade a spade and say, okay, we'll work with you in the short term. But is that but reality, though, term? Dr. Jasser? Is that reality, though? I mean, obviously, they've beheaded 10 people already this month here, but knowing full well that there's oil involved, there's military bases involved, do you really think that the United States would take any chance whatsoever to get involved in a country like that, call them out on human rights violations when we know that they'd only call us out on human rights violations, they would then call on our relationship with Israel as a human right violation, that simply put, politically, that's never going to happen. We're never going to call them out. Well, well, bring it on. I, I mean, if we, if we are going to talk about moral equivalencies, there's no moral equivalency between the draconian, misogynistic culture that is doing things in the name of Islam that's in the 12th century versus what we in democracies like in Israel and in Europe and America could do in order to preserve freedom and preserve movements that are actually wanting to be free. And we're looked upon as hypocrites because we hug and, and embrace their kings and their oppressors there while free movements like the Green Revolution in Iran and others who want to be free, we keep ignoring. You're right. It's going to be a painful uh, uh, dust up, if you will, that happens, but there's an opportunity happening in the Arab awakening, and if we want to be on the right side of history, that that page is um, Islam today is going through a change no different than the West went through when theocracy created the the battle against theocracy created America, and if you want to see a battle ending where our whack-a-mole program against Al Qaeda stops. The creators of al-Qaeda are the petrodollars that are fueling radicals and interpretations of Islam that are radicalizing Muslims in America, let alone in, in Saudi Arabia. So we have to change that policy. So with about the minute or so that I have left here, are you then saying that there is no doubt in your mind that Saudi Arabia, we, we go back and forth about Yemen, Iran, Iraq, so many others, but in your thought, oh, wait a minute, I'm told we only have 20 seconds left. It is my bad. Well, I got the time wrong. Do you think we need to cut off relations with Saudi Arabia, yes or no? Not cut off. We have common enemies, but yet make them accountable openly in the U.N. and in every chance we have. We can't keep giving them a pass. That'll be the last word. Dr. Judy Zasser, Azudi Jasser, thanks so much for joining us, and we continue.